So it's really important to look at the quality of silage and to think about the animals you're actually feeding. Um, it's no good taking one big cut of silage and hoping it's going to fit everything because it seriously doesn't. So if we're wanting to feed dry cows we need a moderate silage and maybe mixing that even with straw and if we've got fast finishing cattle or pregnant ewes we want a nice high quality silage. And the really important things about intake of, of forage is um, dry matter. We really need to be looking at the dry matter so that um, very wet silage, it's really hard for animals to actually eat enough to meet their needs if it's very wet. And by wet I'm talking about the sort of silage that if you get a handful and you can squeeze juice out easily, then it's going to be less than 20% dry matter. So we're not really wanting that. If we, th we think about the effluent and the losses we can incur with very wet silages, um, you know, they, they actually aren't ideal in terms of intake and they're not ideal in terms of um, fermentation because they're much more high risk in terms of fermentation. So with wet silages it's really important we put a, um, an additive on to make sure they ferment properly. Um, in terms of other aspects of fermentation we really need to be getting um, a sensible pH, not too low. If we get very acid pH we actually get poor intake by cattle and sheep. Um, if we think about a pH of 3.5 or so for very acid grass silage or maize then it really does limit intake because it's so acid in the rumen that it, the animal has to buffer all that acid to actually get digestion working well given the rumen pH of 6 is ideal for fibre digesting bugs so it's really important we're not getting too acid um, silage. We get much higher pH silage and dry silages like in big bales because they've had a limited fermentation because they've had low, low dry matter. So I think everybody should be looking at their silages sniffing, squeezing them, um, seeing what sort of fermentation. None of us want the sort of silage that, um, you know, is a sort of silage that sticks to your hands and you can't get rid of the smell for three days. Um, that is a really poor fermentation. It is counterproductive for nearly all classes of stock. Um, often the poor cattle are given that sort of silage because the sheep won't even touch it. So those sorts of things are really important. And if we think, I mean, I, I look to the sort of quality of silage, particularly for sheep, um, and, you know, if we lose one megajoule of a kilogram dry matter on the silage, quality we can be feeding up to 10 kilograms more concentrates so if we're trying to economize and keep um, feeding effective as in putting the right amounts of energy and protein in front of animals at least cost but not compromising quality we need to be feeding really good quality silage um, and trying to minimize the losses of that silage so allowing animals easy access to the feed making sure they can get their allocated allowance um, and refreshing and putting fresh uh, um, silage out every day if possible